Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband with the Between Empires mod. Last time around, we did some stuff, mostly running around chasing after the father. I think, I think we'll have to uh, leave that to the very end. And I think that's more fitting, actually, to end it with the wedding scene, if I can ever actually figure out how to get it. Or hopefully that it, it, it's still operational that I will be able to do that. Anyways, there has been mounting international pressure for us to stop the war with the British, which is kind of interesting because, well, not really, I guess, but if you compare what I've taken from the British or what I've moved in to take from them, and now there's mounting international pressure, there's a... You get basically a screen and then it, it increases your infamy every time it turns up. Um, and it says, you know, inf da 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 da, and they want to resume trade and stuff like that. So there's international pressure for me to uh, stop the war with Great Britain. Um, which I guess is understandable just because of, you know, how much trade I imagine Great Britain does. Although, I mean, compared to what my empire might be doing at this point, plus the, um, you know, c compared to how many factories I have, you could probably, uh, it doesn't really compare with anyone else. Uh, but just, it's kind of funny how everyone's like, oh no, don't fight Great Britain, why have you taken so much international pressure? And when I fought the Russians, I, you know, I took huge swaths of land and no one said anything. I crushed Belgium, no one said anything. I mean, France, now it was the communist France, but I took loads, no one said anything. Um, the Serbians, who else have we fought? Um, not for long turns anyway. Yeah, I took Naples from them as well. I did have an idea of maybe going down and taking this part, but as international pressure is now mounting, it's time to end this war. And so, I still want to go ahead and take London, because then I've taken London, then I've taken Paris, and, you know, I did take Moscow, although I didn't feel that I would keep it, because, you know, we took so much from the Russians, and only so much that we could actually hold on to. It was very unlikely to hold on to the capital. But we have got huge uh, living space. It's not the right war, is it? Uh, we got... Well, it kinda. Um, looking for areas to live. This... That, that's a weird angle to look at it. But, yeah, we've got... we Really what I wanted was uh, wood. I was going east for wood. Because they've got a lot of wood. They've also got a lot of wheat. So, really, I would have liked to maybe get more of the Ukrainian area. I mean, at this point, everyone in the world, or maybe everyone in the West, I should say, everyone in the West is very familiar with a map of Ukraine and, you know, knowing the cities. And you kind of get an idea of, you know, just because of the what's going on right now. Anyways, we're going to fight London. I've decided to do it without um, the rest of the army to come in and aid me. I've got 161 troops. There's 190 British troops defending. But it's going uh, it, to be that one, the tier battle where, you know, you have defeat the first tier and then you go on to the next one. So, as long as I defeat the first one, then my howitzers can pummel the second line into submission. So, it's all going to be, it's all going to be very important that we win, that we do a good fight in the beginning. And then, for the second one, you know, I can let my howitzer pum pummel that down until there's basically nothing left. At this point, though, as it's 1924, you know, every, almost every other country has gas at this point, so they have proper protection against gas. And almost, a, well, half of the world's countries have shock troopers. I know just Portugal, I think, got shock troopers just now, a few seconds ago. 
So I'm sure the British got it as well. But yeah, it's gonna be... We're gonna have to go in very quickly. And... Uh, we might even get... Here we go. For... Well, I haven't even been able to... So my... The foreign... Uh, the infamy has increased now to 15. Um, so... Our international allies and adversaries are growing anxious at seeing us engaged in prolonged combat with the British Empire. Following multiple incidents in which foreign diplomats and nationals had their supposed rights violated and troops had been quartered in their ambassador's estate for more than two weeks, pressure has been growing on our foreign office. Calls for a ceasefire or even peace to allow laissez-faire trade to open up again have been growing louder and more emphasis uh, emphasized. If we drag this war on too long, certain nations hostile to our cause might see it as justification to take up arms against us and aid our enemies in ongoing war. So infamy is slowly building up and as that builds up, a lot of nations start to, you know, you what? I've... You can't build pressure like that with a day in between. Oh, British Empire just got... It's not even... I mean, it's not within hours. I've got... How many times... It's... I mean, you can't push pressure like that. Uh... Phew. I tell her I'm indisposed. I've got kind of a big problem here. Okay, so the pressure is mounting. 30 is really high. How much? 26 hours. 26 hours. I'm gonna have too high pressure by then. I'm gonna have to have. There's gonna be so much. Okay, so it's up to 33 now. Morning. Noon, afternoon. So, like, not even eight hours. High infamy. The world is wary of your nation's aggression and general unreliability. Foreign officers around Europe and Asia has denounced your action and distanced themselves from our diplomats. If we don't defuse the situation immediately, a declaration of hostility or even war may flood into our capital. I mean, you can't ink. <laughs> the re really ink. I think that is a bit much in pre increasing pressure like this. It's already up to 42. What, just because I'm laying siege to London? Okay, it's, it's now at 44. 47. Uh, okay, we are ready to lead our assault. Okay, so I... It's now or never because we won't be able to lay another, we won't be able to prepare another assault. This might go completely, you know, shit immediately. But, yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Right. First things first is formation. And then we need to move two of these groups forward. Why do I only have one machine gun? Right, so the two groups I've sent up is the stormtroopers. They need to immediately start digging. My cannons are setting up. Uh, we're losing quite a bit of troops, but the trench is coming up. So we got one trench there, and we got one trench over here. This group needs to actually get inside the trench. I want to get my machine gunner over here. So, I think we've... we lost a lot initially. 23 men casualty. We're 6 dead, 17, 18 wounded. Um, gonna get the field guns over to this side. Alright, the casualties are mounting for me. We might actually get more protection by being completely behind the trenches. 
I see a lot of fire landing around here. Oh, my machine gunner was taken out. You can see a lot of uh, enemy machine gun fire. Oh no, it's the machine gunner here that's firing. Okay, so it's now up to 44 for us. 24 for the enemy. The British are laying it on. Yeah, damn it. Alright. Keep it up, soldiers. Not very likely that I'll hit anything. It's almost like the artillery is firing after me. We're s losing so many men here in the center. And it's... Oh shit. It's like they're slow... Yeah, the, the enemy machine gunner seems to be slowly m making its way through the line. It's a risk here for the heavy artillery. Looks like the first line has been cleared. We're gonna fire gas. Uh, the enemy has lost 36 while I have lost 60, so twice as m many troops. So what was this? This was 4th. 3rd company was forced to retreat. These two kind of unable to fire 1st company. Move them a little bit forward here. Not too much though. 3rd. If I can get them back in some kind of order. We gas them. That should have reduced their ability to fire quite a bit. But we're now... We've got about 60 men left against 162. 160 of the enemy. It's not looking good. They've got 110 more men than us. And what I, what I can see is, uh, well, the first line has been cleared. So we should be able to focus now on the second line. I'm not sure why I didn't get... Oh, I just got reinforcements. I just got... Damn. God damn it. So we just got reinforcements. Can I get first company? Let's see about getting these guys into position, right? Loads of artillery, it's mostly. Ah, the machine gunners! I, I saw that I had one. There was definitely one that had spawned in. Um, the troops that spawned in were quickly lost. First company is completely gone. I don't that doesn't have any troops at all. I took a hit. God damn it. So much blood everywhere. Is this second company? No, that's not second company. That's uh, third. Get third closer so they're at least protected by the trench. And then I'm actually going to order them to lie down. The enemy will focus the fire on third. But because they're lying down they won't be able to hit them, hopefully. 
So at this point, I've got 20 men routed, 35 dead, and 57 wounded, and we've got 48 soldiers ready. The enemy has lost 65 men, dead, and 11 wounded, but they still got 134 men ready. Luckily for me, at this point, we have more or less destroyed first line. Which means that I can prepare I can prepare take quite the t I can take quite the time to prepare my second assault because my second assault is going to be very challenging so the still the amount of fire this one guy, this last guy, is going to receive. So we... Everyone... Is now... There we go. Last guy's gone. First part of the battle... Is finished. I've got 46 men ready. Against 122. The enemy got almost twice the amount of troops that I have. Luckily for me though, they've got no howitzers. I do. So I will be able to continue to pummel them. You know, already we got a really good hit on this first trench line. And they've and a high amount of their troops just died. We actually got two good hits there. Getting more as we go. Anyways, I will have to prepare them quite a bit before we go over the top and attack the last bit. But I uh, I think we got it. I think we got it now. Gas! Gas! Shift your horses! Gas! Right, so at this point there's about 25 defenders left. We have been able to uh, shoot them up and as you have seen, they don't actually carry gas masks. So I'm not entirely sure why the soldiers in London haven't been able to be issued those. But I'm maybe that is part of the... Um, part of the, what's it called? The military supplies as well. I'm gonna get my troops up here. So, at this point, it, the one thing that I should say, we should actually go over and take a look at that. Um, the enemy's artillery positions were really susceptible to gas. So at this point, They've got barely two cannons ready. I think if I hit the British with another round of gas, we'll basically get rid of basically most of them and definitely, hopefully, anyways, the artillery. And once that is done, I mean, there's nothing left. So now I actually have an advantage of 26 men, but that could quickly just absolutely melt away even with just what they have left 20 men and those cannons 
Unfortunately, for some reason, the heavy artillery or like the field guns and the heavy artillery kind of stuck all over the place. So I'm not sure about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sacrifice the third stormtrooper group. Um, so they're going to be moving up first and drag the fire of the enemy. They're already dragging the fire of the enemy. But they're going to move up. They're going to drag the fire of the enemy. As that's happening, we're going to have uh, the second uh, company move up. Dig a trench set up right here. Once the trench is dug, fourth group will move up, stand behind the trench. And as the trench, as soon as the trench is built, I'll also pull up the um, artillery. But we'll start off the attack by having our howitzers firing gas. And they just fired gas. So, right. Third group. Up onto the hill. Second company. Up. We should actually move these guys up to provide suppressing fire already. And then field guns up. So the gas, unfortunately, didn't hit the artillery back there, which I would have wanted. Okay, second group is more or less in line. Start to dig in. Third group, there's only two guys left. They should pull back at this point. Field guns are coming up. Second group should make sure they're in the trench. Fourth should be kind of on the back side here. Field guns. Why aren't the field guns firing? Everyone should be firing. Third group was completely lost. Why aren't you firing? Oh, why are you getting all the way into the trench? Get up front then. At least fire on them. Fire, 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 damn you. So there's only 11 enemies left. Go on. The enemy artillery is firing back. Why aren't you firing on them? Go on, fire. Now we go. Now there's fire coming out of these. They're two clustered together, which I don't like. I think we got... I guess we got a lucky hit in those few shots we fired. Right, move forward. Set up here, then. Most of the enemy seems to be gone. Or enough of them are destroyed. There's only eight of them left. Artillery is moving forward. Right. It seems to be working. We just lost one of our artillery pieces. It's now or never, soldiers. Over the top. I'll lead the assault. Since there's only eight, they, uh, my soldiers should be able to uh, keep the enemy suppressed. That plus the artillery. Do we have time for uh, maybe another gas? No, there's 22 seconds. I am being targeted by quite accurate artillery fire coming from that cannon right there. We've got one guy over there. 22 seconds. I want to... Um, oh! That <laughs> that artillery shell I saw as it flew right behind me. We have actually won the battle right now. Um, I want to still press fire onto the enemy or press gas onto them. The enemy is retreating now, but I want to make sure that I get in and up here, pull down that flag, moving into the trench. The poor bastards weren't issued proper gas masks, and so a lot of these have succumbed to the gas, if not direct artillery hits. And the ones beyond, we've got one guy down here, supposedly. And then two on the left. 
according to the map if they don't not already died. Because it's just two guys over there. I'll tell everyone to hold fire just for the sake of not shooting me to pieces. With the artillery. So yeah, there's two guys. Probably artillery unable to retreat. I'm gonna go over the top here. There they are. Oh, they're without guns even. And there we have it. We are victorious. Victory! We've taken London. Unfortunately though, the international pressure at this point is so high that we're most likely going to follow up this bit of god-awful uh, war. But hopefully I'll be able to avoid it. But who knows. Here's the statistics of that battle. We gain morale and renown. 18 morale, 19 renown. Uh, in terms of our losses, we had a total of 40 kills, 66 wounded and 20 routed, leading to a total of 126 casualties out of a force of, what did I start with, 160 something? The enemy uh, lost everything, 190 casualties, where 166 were killed, 21 wounded and 3 routed. Uh, as we took it, we are actually able to pick up French troops, which I guess I could uh, muster into my army. One thing that I was kind of surprised over to find was why so few of my machine guns turned up. Uh, I should have had plenty, but apparently not. Well, there's a l kind of a lot of recruits there. I certainly lost a lot before going in. Got a few old muskets, loads of helmets, but I'm not interested in any of that. Not going to give this to anyone. Clearly, we need to immediately sue for peace. Because, uh, well, this is going nowhere. We need to... Kingdom of Serbia... Okay, so I guess the first one to declare war on me. I can actually make peace right now with... with just what we hold. Which is, I think, perfect. No penalties. Victory points. We'll peace out both. Uh, we are at peace now. So we're peace with Serbia. We're peace with the British Empire. We've got 21,000 pounds... Not only that, but we got all of this as well. And we've managed to take London, of all places. Book Merchant. I, haven't, I don't think I've run into one of these. Well, clearly I have, because this one's selling cheese. <laughs> He's selling cheese. Wandering Poet, do you have anything? Oh, you already... I already knew that one. Right. Uh, what kind of... They do have a weapons factory here. Um, wonderful. Wonderful indeed. So, we did have that battle. Great. Now we just need to marry that girl. But I imagine there's not only external pressures uh, on us, but internal as well. Uh, to the point where we almost have a uh, socialist revolution once again. Not only that, even the bloody liberals are turning out. Even they are, uh, are coming out in force. Not as much though, but still, some of them are coming out. Don't think we've seen that turn up for us before. Um... With that, really only what I need now is the uh, marriage thing. But we might end up in one last big war just because 
as of speaking. Da, 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 notes, faction. Uh, let's see, German Empire. Infamy is 47. That's kind of a lot. Luckily, we do have quite good relationship with a lot of uh, different empires in the world. So we'll see. The thing is though, we are by far the largest empire. The only one that I can really see doing damage to us. Vienna or the Austrians, why do I own this why do I own this village in the middle of Austria? Anyways, the Austro-Hungarians can possibly do some damage. But really, I think it is the British colonies. Because the British colonies seems to be the only one that's really doing a lot. It looks like the Russians are actually pushing them back. Since this place has been cut off from the rest. So the Russians, the Russians seem to have been focusing on reconquering. Or conquering kind of a lot of territory. But yeah, the only one... I could see, and I mean, there's no way they're gonna come against us right now. And they actually seem to be be pushed back by um, by the Russians. So right now, yeah, I don't see anyone really declaring war on us and causing a huge amount of trouble for us. We brought down London, we brought down Paris, we brought down Moscow. I would call that a done deal. Now I just want to end it with the marriage screen. I'm uh, seeing as though it's kind of a grind. I'll jump. I'll I'll let you. Um, I'll I'll let you. Um, what am I gonna say? Basically, you don't have to watch me grind through that. For I mean, last time when I tried to grind through it, I literally afterwards I saw that I'd recorded. About two hours. Something like 126 minutes of footage of me trying to grind through that episode. So, I am it should work a little bit better now because I kind of know what's going on. But yeah, I won't be showing you all of that. So, with saying way too much already, let's cut to me getting married to that awful harlot. Right, so I find myself here once again with my foreign minister. Unfortunately, the world has more or less declared war on us. However, it's not exactly what you think. It's not actually due to my infamy. It's because I once again accidentally allied with another nation. In this case, Denmark. So we are currently allied with Denmark, and Denmark has somehow managed to drag me into war with the French, with the Italians, the Austro-Hungarians, the Russians, the Turkish, the Greeks, um, who else? The Spanish, the Portuguese, basically everyone, um, except the British colonies. Um, so we are at war with a lot of people. I, yeah, here we can go. French Republic, Russian Empire, Austro-Hungaria, Kingdom of Italy, Ottoman Empire, Spanish, Swiss, Portuguese. Oh, I was British colonist. I didn't even know. Afghanistan as well. French Commune. So both the French hate me. Um, Greece, Romania, Sweden and Norway. Basically everyone. But it's not because... I am a horrible warmonger. It's because I'm allied to Denmark. That is what's caused the problem. Uh, which is rather hilarious. Anyways, I um, I've figured out how to get rid of the Italians. Because we're going to give them back Naples. I don't want that um, sort of exclave there. Anyways, so we're going to give them Na Naples in case of peace. Um, now I'm in Rennes because I'm going to take this out and we're going to take out more of the French before we sue for peace with them. Looks like is war isn't over. War isn't over. But this big one is going to be the last one. Um, unless unless um, some big army materialize, 
we're gonna defeat the alliance in detail uh, hopefully just piece out most of them but as the time of the episode right now it looks like that's gonna be for the next one so for the next one I'm hoping that I can end this we'll get peace once and for all and I can marry that old crone so with all of that said I'll say as I always say hopefully you guys enjoy this and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one bye